Hi everyone, my name is Alex and this is Tank Tested. Uh, I failed to do something important, which is mute my microphone. Um, but uh, how are you guys doing today? Hopefully uh, you can hear me. Um, so going forward uh, today, I wanna do something kind of different. Uh, you can see that I have a camera pointed at the table. Uh, it's actually my phone directly in front of me. Uh, and I am going to be doing some drawing today. Now, I'm not turning this into a art uh, YouTube channel, but I do want to start sketching out uh, the aquascape that I'm gonna put in my 150 gallon. So in the next few minutes, we'll start in on that process. Um, before we do, I want to remind everyone of the tank that we're working on because I'd love for us to brainstorm together and work together as we build uh, sketches of our aquascapes. So I actually have a bunch of markers. Um, these are art markers. Um, they're alcohol-based markers, so I should be able to sketch out some pretty drawings. Uh, and also I've got, you know, my handy pencil. Um, there we go and a pen. And then I've also made up a couple of templates. So you can see here uh, that I have a template of the 150 gallon tank so that I can sketch in and draw aquascapes as we, uh, as we go. So knowing that, I wanna start off by showing us a little bit of the tank again. So. You see here, this is the living room that I'm at right now. Um, I uh, set up this tank, you know, it's right in front of me. It's a 150 gallon tank and it's, uh, the rim is six feet off the ground. So uh, knowing that it's six feet off the ground, I need to build an aquascape so that I can actually uh, get in and work with relatively easily. Uh, it's two feet deep as well. So when you start thinking about like, how do you do maintenance on a tank that's two feet deep? Um, that's tough. It's a tough nut to crack. So figuring that out is part of this process of building a skate that's both beautiful and also accessible. Uh, before we go much further, I actually want to uh, share this YouTube link. So apologies, I'm gonna do something terrible as I work live. I'm actually going to share this link with a couple of friends of mine that are aquascapers in the hopes that, you know, maybe they will be interested in hopping on and collaborating as we work together. So bear with me. How's everyone doing? Um, and also, actually, I'll ask a question that I've rarely, if ever, ask. Uh, for those of you watching, where are you guys watching from? Where are we working uh, on this together from? Now uh, I'll wait for you guys to respond and I will go silent for just a second as I reach across my camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Posting something on a little private group and we'll go from there. Oh gosh, sorry, I'm leaning all over the place. Okay, posting it, and I'm walking away. This is professionalism. So, uh, all right, where is everyone from? It's a lot of windows next to it. Yeah, I'll get to that in a second. So, uh, Ontario, Canada, San Pedro, California, watching in your bed in London, UK, um, New Hampshire, US Kansas, Vincent is watching from Germany, uh, Chicago, Illinois, Northern Kentucky. Craig is in Northern Kentucky. Great. So like we have a, a nice smattering of people from around the United States and a few people from Europe. I know that it's super late right there. Uh, so I'll try to start this process pretty shortly so that we can at least see a little bit before I know you guys have to go to bed. It's, it's getting down to the bedtime. Uh, the mic dot dot dot. What, what is that in reference to? 
Sammy Wu, what is the mic dot dot dot? Now you have me doubting whether or not you can hear me. It looks like you can hear me. I'll just tap the mic. Yeah, oh, that's awful. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I sincerely apologize for that. So, uh, South Carolina, Atlanta. Uh, Andre is from Atlanta. Sammy, our South Carolina. Great. So, uh, I'm going to give away the game a little bit and show you a little bit of what I've been working on. Um, I'm just going to show you a quick preview. I don't want this to be the... Oh, the mic is a bit crackly. That's not good. Hmm. All right, bear with me. I'm going to see what the audio actually sounds like. Hello? Hello? Mm -hmm. Hello? Hmm. I don't see a crackling on my side. The mic is perfectly crystal clear. Gosh, this is really conflicting information you guys are giving me. Okay, I'm going to move forward and act like everything's fine. So, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of what I've been working on. This is a preview of a video that I'm going to post probably in a week or two on my channel. Uh, and a lot of what we work on together will probably make it into one of those videos. So this is an aquascape that I've been tinkering around with. Um, I hope that you guys can make out what that is. Maybe you'll have to go full screen to really see it. Um, I can maybe try making it a little bit bigger on my screen. There we go. That's okay. There we go. A little bit more zoomed in so you can see what we're working with. So this is an aquascape design that I've already started working on, coloring in, uh, making it look nice and pretty. Um, and I want to do a couple more of these while we're on this uh, live stream together. So Starting off this process, I want to give you a little, good, little bit of background about the hardscape that I'm working with. And uh, the hardscape, I've already bought. Video is going to come out super soon about that. Uh, I've got a bunch of elephant stone, or elephant skin stone, which is a very finely textured, very smooth stone. Um, I wish I had a piece with me. I do. I do have a piece with me. So I'll show it to you right on this camera right here. So this is elephant stone. This is actually a pretty craggly piece of elephant stone, but you can see how it kind of looks a little bit like, well, elephant skin. Uh, I've got a bunch of this. I have actually close to five, no, no, 250 pounds. Let's not oversell it. I have 250 pounds of this stone. I also have a bunch of Malaysian driftwood. Now, Malaysian driftwood is actually my favorite uh, my favorite of the hardscaping woods. And that's because it's got a really deep color, and as it sits in the aquarium, as fish uh, pick away at it, as you know, mainly plecos eat away at it, they leave behind all of the exposed, harder sections of the wood. So you end up with really, really detailed texture in the wood. It lasts a really long time as well. Now, the thing is with, uh, Malaysian driftwood, it's pretty chunky. It's a very thick wood. So uh, knowing what materials I have, I've started developing this hardscape. Uh, this embraces the Malaysian driftwood, these big chunks of wood going off in a diagonal direction. And it also embraces the fact that I don't have giant pieces of the elephant stone. I've got stone that looks, you know, it's I've got pieces that are bigger than this, but when 150 gallon tank, I don't have pieces that are big enough uh, to really fill fill the tank up. So I've got to kind of piecemeal it together and have the stone be the accent and the wood be the strong primary feature of this setup. So uh, knowing that, I want to start the process of building escape together. Uh, you can see kind of the end game. This is kind of what we want it to look like. So uh, I'll expand a little bit more on this, but oh gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, can you guys give me a little bit of feedback of what type of scape you'd like 
me to uh, draw tonight, what, what you think would look really good, knowing that my aquarium is in the center of the room and I need to be able to look at it from three sides. So those are the restrictions. Uh, if you have suggestions of a look or a feel that you want me to go for, we can go down that path together. Uh, so a couple of questions people asked. I'm going to transition while I wait for people to give me their thoughts on what type of aquarium they want me to, to work on. Um, so this is my living room. Uh, I've, I got a lot of comments in my last video about how many windows I have in my apartment. And it's true, I do have quite a few windows. This is one of the few sections of my house that I actually don't have a, a window on that portion of the wall. Now I could do it against this wall, that would probably work, uh, but there's a window, well, it's right over there. I don't want to point too far off camera. It's right over there that goes right up to the edge of this wall that's behind me. So no matter what, I'd kind of be in a weird place where my aquarium would need to be up against a window. So this felt like the best possible option. And the reason why is the uh, door behind the aquarium that you can see there is relatively shaded. I usually have my blinds closed on the window next to the aquarium, and the aquarium are in the window behind the aquarium uh, that you can see in this shot right now. Uh, I have those yellow curtains that I can draw completely closed and block out all my sunlight. So the hope is that I can catch any algae blooms before they take off. Um, this tank has been set up, it has water in it, it's got some plants in it right in front of me. Uh, it's kind of a holding tank. It's been set up for a couple months now, and I've had no algae problems yet. So I'm not too worried about that. Now, uh, in terms of, uh, let's see, there are a couple of other questions. Uh, Sammy Wu, I love your rimless tank. I love my rimless tank too. Custom Aquarium sent this to me. Uh, it took them a couple of months to make it, but they made it from scratch and they set up the stand themselves, or they built the stand themselves to the dimensions I wanted. Like, I could not be happier with this tank. It's awesome. Um, Cloud 9.5, just wondering how much did that hardscape cost? Uh, and then 250 pounds, yeah. So it cost um, not that much, actually, in the grand scheme of things. So I bought all of this hardscape from my local club, Guapa. I'm really scooping my own video here because I'm about to make a video about the whole process of buying the hardscape, but I'll, I'll give you guys an insight anyway. There are only 40 of you watching. It's fine. Um, tell your friends. There should be more than 40 people watching this. This is quality content. There's a drawing on the table. Well, you can't see the drawing. There's a drawing on the table? I mean, how many places in the aquarium world can you get a drawing included in your video? Uh, anyway. Uh, 250 pounds of hardscape from Guapa, my local club, ended up costing me $250, um, which is pretty amazing. Uh, we buy a lot of our hardscape in bulk, and that hardscape sits in one of our members' garages and just kind of takes a couple of years to cycle through. So I went over, I knew that we had gotten a bunch of elephant stone in, I think, about a year ago, there was a lot of it. And it hadn't been too picked over. So that's the stone I went with. Because while there were a couple of other varieties of stone that I, I kind of like better, frankly, they had largely been picked over. Uh, people had gone through and taken the best bits of every type of stone. And if I was going to set up an aquascape, I didn't want to be using the leftovers from someone else. So I went with elephant stone. Um, the Malaysian driftwood, that's my favorite wood and I really, really wanted to use that. And we didn't have a whole bunch of it on stock. Um, the Malaysian driftwood cost a little bit more. Um, all, all in, my hardscape for this tank, excluding aqua soil, excluding sand, um, ended up costing about $500, which it's a 250, or it's a 150 gallon tank. Uh, it has 10 square feet of surface area, and it's two feet tall. $500 is a pretty amazing deal. 
So that's the long and the short of how much the, uh, the aquarium cost me in terms of hardscape materials. Um, there's a lot of other stuff that I also have to make this work and uh, I'm not going to scoop myself so you'll have to watch the video that I post about it to see that. Uh, moving forward on a couple of more questions. Um, are you wanting like an islandscape? What fish do you have in mind for stocking? Uh, that's asked by Charlotte. So that's a good question. Uh, the, the fish that I have in mind for this tank are important to the look and feel that I want for the aquarium. I plan on fully stocking the aquarium with Asian, or not Asian, Amazonian fish. Uh, I'm not a big fan of cichlids for the most part, although I do right now have rainbow cribs in this tank, um, and they're not from uh, Amazon either. So it's kind of a weird mix, or it's a weird uh, fighting what I just said. But I really like smaller fish. I like nano fish. Uh, and I might get a couple of small cichlids that can be trusted around plants to act as um, some sort of predatory threat to the smaller fish so they do exhibit traditional uh, shoaling behaviors because if you don't have some fish that creates a little bit of tension in the aquarium the fish won't shoal they won't exhibit the behaviors that they naturally exhibit in the wild so that's what i'm going with um, er aquatics how about spider wood moss leaf litter and something tall like sag or val um so that sounds like an interesting black water tank to some degree i don't have spider wood so that's like a hard out um there's no way i can do that uh moss i have some christmas moss i'm planning on including that in the tank already um i've never been a big fan of val uh it just has never done it for me it feels a little bit too clunky is a weird way to describe a plant but it feels very clunky to me so that's not really the vibe i'm going for but i have seen tanks that do really beautiful things with val there was a tank at aquatic experience two years ago i think that uh embraced that and it looked really really beautiful uh, Victor, hey Victor, uh, Victor was on my live stream last week, yeah, last Thursday. Um, if you position the sump out of flow, in flow, you could create a circulating stream effect. If you position the sump out flow, in flow, you could create a circulating stream effect. I follow what you're saying, I don't know how I would do that in this tank. So if you want to like fill me in, let me know either in this chat or you can send me a text message, but not right now because my phone is my camera. Um, because I have the sump drilled in the aquarium, I can't really move the inflow outflow except for adjusting the nozzle. That's why I'm, I'm a little bit confused as to your, your question. But um, I like the idea of having it be stream like if you have a hot tip of how to do that, let me know. Um, have you ever seen the mite cave? Uh, I think that something like that would be cool. I have not seen the mite cave. Uh, should I look it up? I'm going to look it up. So I'm going to lean over everything again and see what exactly you're talking about. Because I really like seeing aquascapes and seeing what they're doing and why they why they resonate with people. Oh, I have seen this tank. Yeah, it is a really beautiful tank. Um, so I'm going to go back to the to stream now. So the Mike Cave, um, it would look really cool. I don't necessarily have a reason why it wouldn't work, other than. I'm worried that I don't have the hardscaping materials to pull that off. Um, the other thing about that setup is that 
he's making a lot of use of force perspective where the tank is not as deep as it seems so all the rocks are kind of pointed inward yeah if if you if my camera is the front of the tank all the rocks are pointed like this to create force perspective lines uh, and for a tank that can be viewed from three sides i would start to break down so if i were to do a similar cave-like structure it wouldn't look quite as deep it wouldn't have quite the depth that that setup does it's not to say that it wouldn't be cool it just wouldn't have quite the impact so just something to to consider uh, sorry i have not done any drawing and i'm just answering questions but this is fun i enjoy this i hope that you do too we'll get to drawing soon i promise um So I say a huge group of some small schooling fish, except ember tetras, or example, ember tetrans or harlequin tetras, and a pack of assorted corridors like five per species, maybe three species, and a few showy fish like angels. Yeah, so I am planning on mainly having small fish. I, probably I'm gonna go with cardinal tetras. They're wonderful. Uh, maybe one or two other species of card or of tetras. Uh, maybe i'll include a couple of pencil fish in the mix i've never actually kept pencil fish so i'm interested about trying that out um definitely quarries i adore corydoras uh they're really really cute little fish and because i am planning on having a lot of sand in my aquarium um, you see in this drawing i've got a sand substrate here um I think that they will appreciate that because quarries do enjoy having a relatively soft bottom. Um, so having a nice fine sand will, will work well with their, their little feelers that actually have a name, but I don't remember what the name of their feelers are. Um, Janine says, aren't hatchet fish Amazonian? I love the little weirdos. I saw some marbled ones. Yeah, uh, I believe they are yes they definitely are when we went down uh to the amazon this past january i did not see any but i'm 99 percent sure that they are from the amazon um they are really cool and they're definitely a great fish that fills the top water of your aquarium and if we're talking about a tank like this that has a lot of top water having a fish that really makes use of that would be very very uh appealing uh Toby's responding to Sammy and Arowana needs way more than 150 gallons. Um, I agree. I think it would be tough to keep an Arowana in anything smaller than, frankly, what like Joey has. Um, yeah, they get longer than two feet at a bare minimum. So it wouldn't really be able to turn around in the aquarium. Plus, I live in the United States, so I would have to get a South American arowana, and they're not as pretty. So um, that's that's my two cents on that. Um, next up, uh, oh gosh. So, ooh, so I'm going to respond to <laughs> um, Aquapro uh, Rainbow Gravel. So Aquapros, thank you for that valuable feedback that's super helpful i'm not going to go with rainbow gravel but i appreciate the um the suggestion um so john peeney uh i actually spoke with john on the phone earlier today uh john is a as a really really talented aquascaper i think this last con concept can support a wide variety of plants well and will allow you to swap things out most fun types of scape for long-term keeping in my opinion um thanks so uh, John, this is kind of, and actually everyone, but this is this is my top setup right now. It definitely can be improved upon, um, and I've got a great idea of how to improve upon it. So I think I might start by resketching this setup um, and leaning into a couple of suggestions that other aquascapers have made to me along the way, um, but. I will, I will continue reading everyone's feedback. Um, dwarf rainbows. Rainbows are lovely, but uh, not Amazon. Um, 
All right. There are lots of lovely comments. Uh, rather than respond to all of them, though, I'm going to focus on so. Uh, Dylan says, needs more red plants and escape, in my opinion. Just some AR mini and a few clumps draws your eye and a mostly green scape, I feel. Uh, so I think that's a fair point. Uh, historically, I have not kept a lot of red plants. Uh, for whatever reason, they don't super resonate with me. Um, I really like green plants a lot more, which is nice because green plants are often a lot easier to keep. But I do really, really like tiger lotuses. Um, they have a beautiful reddish orange hue. Uh, they're a really nice eye-catching centerpiece uh, plant, especially if you're not going for a diorama style where scale is critical. Um, they're really, really good for the nature style aquariums that are kind of mimicking the feel of what an imagined natural world would be like. Uh, so I do plan on having some tiger lotus in there, which are not demonstrated here. Um, and yeah, I've got a couple of little red spots that I was thinking maybe some uh, some of the redder crypts would be good there. But I, I can see the point of potentially having a little bit more red and escape like this. So with that, AR Mini is super easy and goes red with minimal effort. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to fight you on that. So uh, I, with that, I'm going to start drawing the first pass of something. So I've got this sketch out. Uh, I hope that you guys can see these borders. Um, I feel kind of bad that they're not a little bit darker now. Uh, maybe I can darken them up just a little bit on camera. I've got to get used to drawing with the picture frame anyway. So I'll darken up these edges, make them a little bit more visible on camera. So I included my sump intake and out, uh, inflow and outflow uh, because they're immovable. Immovable. They are part of this tank no matter what. And they're black. And I'm not opposed to them. I really love the inflow and outflow of this tank. But it certainly is something that makes an impression on the view. So not something I can hide. So I've got to embrace that it exists. So uh, one of the things that I, I want to start the process on is thinking through what my line is on this setup. So looking at this tank, one of the very valid feedback that I've gotten on this is that my line uh, that the plants are planted on is just too low in the aquarium. There's too much empty space up at the top. And while that would be lovely for fish to swim around, this is just gonna lead to a relatively low impact aquascape. Um, it could be more impactful by just bringing it up a little bit. So knowing that, I'm gonna start by saying, let's, let's do something like, like that. That feels okay. Now, who knows if you can see this? Um, I hope that you can, but, but uh, there you go. So that's the line that I'm gonna, gonna go with. Um, also, I don't know if you guys are pencil aficionados, but the black wings, I love them. Um, they're just a lovely, lovely pencil, drawing pencil, um, A, because uh, they've got good lead, but also they have the flattened eraser, uh, which means that they can't roll around. So they kind of stay where you put them. A uh, little prog for a product that's not sponsoring me. I should get, make them sponsor me. Um, all right, so knowing that I've got this set up, this isn't necessarily where the aqua soil will live, but this is where I want the plants to kind of land. I want them to, eh, maybe I'll go even a little bit higher. So I kind of want the plants to land like that. 
So I don't want any of the tips of any of my leaves to go above where my uh, outflow is. And that's just because I don't want anything breaching the surface of my aquarium. Um, and I don't want stuff laying on the surface of the aquarium either. Uh, it just doesn't appeal to me. It also is a really, really great way to have plants shade out other plants and also collect algae. So that's my, uh, my two cents on that. So going from there, I've also, if we look at the original drawing, I've got uh, my pieces of wood. Another thing that I've tried to address here, but I could push a little bit harder, is that they're all very similar lengths. They kind of look a little bit too consistent, a little bit too, uh, too artificial. So instead, if we say, well, maybe we want one that's like that, one that's like that, yeah. Basically, just kind of pick them at random for now. We'll see what happens. Um, and go from there. I also do really want my cave. So I've got this cave here. I really like the idea of being able to look all the way through the aquarium because this is a uh, aquarium that needs to be viewable from both sides. So this will be a nice little porthole that connects us from one side to the other. Oh, so this is one of the big things that I want to innovate on. Um, right now I have this cave being made up. I'll show it a little bit closer to the camera if I can. Right now I have this cave being made up of a piece of wood and also a piece of stone. And a thought that I got uh, was that what if the entire cave was made out of wood? And the reason why is that I actually have a piece of driftwood that branches apart and then comes back together and actually creates a beautiful cave. It's a pretty big piece of wood. So the thought is, what if instead I kind of have my cave right here and then I have my piece of wood that comes up like this, kind of just forms a cave like that. So that's, that's one big thing that I'm going to start with as a change is kind of having that as a cave structure. Uh, I, th I really like this idea. I think uh, Victor says, cave, your cribs will love you. I agree. Uh, it, this, this cave and this piece of driftwood is actually where my cribs uh, bred previously, um, where they were able to produce a couple of offspring that are currently living in my tank. So I know that they like this setup <laughs> um, by default. So one of the problems with this pig piece of wood is that it's got a couple of straight edges on top. So I've got to break them up. It also has you know, a couple branches here. It kind of looks a bit like that. So I'm going to have to beat the crap out of this tip here so that it doesn't look artificial because I don't want any straight lines. So there are a couple ways of doing that. Um, one is with a saw to like kind of saw at it randomly and, or a chisel and hack away at it. One thing that I might try doing is using um, a Dremel could be an option for that. Uh, so that piece is locked in there. Maybe I've got you know another piece that kind of breaks off into two pieces like that. So maybe I'll do that. There's another piece there. Maybe this one kind of goes like that. Let's say want some some stuff there like that. So there we go. I'm starting to build out what my what my hardscape will look like. So uh, now I'm going to pause for a second and just catch up on the chats. Sorry about this. Uh, while I do that, I'll transition us back to the view of my aquarium. Cloud9, I'm in possession of a few crypt flamingos if you want me to mail one. 
I do like Crip Flamingos. Maybe we can talk. <laughs> um, I may be able to find one myself, but they are they are really lovely. Um, Squidward, spelled with a lot of not letters. Maybe Baby Tears? Um, I Just because of uh, the aquarium hobby, I assume that you mean uh, Dwarf Baby Tears and not Baby Tears. Baby Tears actually are a, a, a stem plant. Are more of a stem plant than baby than dwarf baby tears. Um, I might use Monte Carlo, which looks quite similar to baby tears, uh, but I'm not sure where I'm going to plant it uh, because I don't want the bottom of my aquarium to be uh, planted with a carpet plant, uh, just because it's really really hard to maintain something that's two feet down. But I am thinking maybe there'll be a couple of patches in the setup that I can have some little carpets on the hillside that I'm creating. It might start to look like they're kind of bald patches with green, but I'm hoping that I can figure out a way to kind of allow some, some carpet to exist, maybe a foot, foot and a half below the surface of the water. Um, frankly, any lower than like 14-ish inches below the surface of the water, uh, Carpeting plants get tougher and tougher uh, because you've got to just pump so much light into the aquarium. When you're pumping that much light, you start to run into algae issues higher up in the aquarium. Uh, Dylan says, hello from Oz. Oz, by the way. Oz. Does that mean Australia or does that mean Austin? I hope it's Australia because Australia is very far away and that would be fun. Could be Austin, though. Who knows? Um, Aqua Ninja Aquarium, that's a sexy inflow outflow. I agree, it is a nice inflow outflow. I like it, although I think you were referring to the drawing. Um, so moving down, um, uh, a musical psychosis i'm here from the aquascapers collective lounge on facebook yeah so that's where i posted this i actually posted this to the aquascapers collective um, which is tac the aquascapers collective um, lounge which is a place where uh competitive aquascapers or people that are aspiring to get to the level of being a competitive aquascaper can post their work and get feedback so i figured that would be a great place to get some aquascapers in the mix and see what they have to say. Um, growing interest, getting ideas for my new aquascape. That's great to hear. Uh, Victor, you might consider the wood not all pointing in the same diagonal, maybe more of a jumble. If you need, um, H2O Plants is here. Uh, hello, it's nice to see you. It's been a, a little while since we talked. Uh, face to face, but it's nice to see that you're in in the chat. Um, if you don't know H2O Plants, they have a wonderful YouTube channel and a, a plant shop worth checking out. Um, maybe you should tie the moss to the wood with string. Yeah, so that's actually something that I'm planning on doing is uh, attaching the Christmas moss to the string or to the, to the wood with string. Generally, I use kind of a, a thread for that. And the thread will slowly decompose and it'll break down before, or it'll break down slower than the moss takes to attach. So by the time the thread disappears, uh, the moss is fully attached. All right, so I'm gonna address, <laughs> he said my name. Um, I'm gonna address Victor. You might consider not having all the wood point in the same diagonal. Uh, I. I can see that. And I'm, I'm trying to not have it all point in the exact same direction. I'm trying to have it be a little bit more random. You can kind of see I've got a line here, line here, line here, line here, line here, line here. Uh, I want them all to still be pointing in one movement, but having them be a little bit more directional, I like the idea of. And the idea of that is just to, A, guide the eye from one side to the other and create that movement, but also to suggest strong flow, 
that all of the routes have kind of been oriented the same direction by a stronger current. <laughs> Steel Plants total fangirl moment. Yeah, um, like two years ago, I guess, uh, H2O Plants uh, and I chatted a bunch uh, early on in both of our YouTube channel careers. And uh, he'd make a lot of videos, a lot of live streams, and he'd shout me out on a regular basis. And it was always nice. Uh, so now that I'm doing these live streams because I'm stuck at home, as are we all, um, it's it's nice to finally be able to return the favor to some degree. So go check out H2O Plants. Um, where did you get the lid? Aqua Ninja Aquariums asks. Uh, so the lid of my 150, I actually had some glass cut. I got a uh, 3 8 inch glass. A possible, no, not that thick. That's way too thick. Um, one quarter inch glass cut. And I, I got it cut from a glass shop, essentially. I had the glass cut uh, to the exact proportions of the, the exterior of my rim rather than the interior. I didn't want a floating rim, or I didn't want a floating panel of glass where you're supporting it with brackets for two reasons. One, uh, finding brackets that are 5 eighths inch thick proved impossible. <laughs> I couldn't find them anywhere. Uh, and second, uh, I liked the idea of not having brackets on the aquarium. Um, there's a third reason too. The weight of the glass um, lids that are a sheet of glass that size is not insignificant. It's probably maybe 50 or 60 pounds of glass. And I'd rather that weight be put vertically down the glass than pulling the glass in, which is what having a lid uh, supported by brackets would do. It would put tensile strength on the glass and try to pull it inward. Uh, but the result is that it creates a really nice clean line where you don't even see that there is a, uh, a lid. I really like it a lot. Um, sometimes you just need to stop over thing, thinking things and just build. I've been here and just did it, just saying. So uh, I agree with that, except for the fact that uh, the tank is... Well, there are a couple of reasons. One, the tank is six feet off the ground, and I don't want to go in without a plan. Um, doesn't mean that I won't change things. This is just kind of a sketch. Um, but I don't want to be up there forever futzing around. Uh, and the second reason is because I run a YouTube channel where I need to film the whole process, the, the idea of setting up an aquascape becomes really, really daunting. Uh, that's why I rarely film the setting up process because it just it's so mentally taxing that it's hard to actually focus on the doing. So for me I need to have a little bit more of a game plan so that I can set up everything properly. So that's that's my reasoning. Um, Cloud 9.5 can anyone see my messages? I can see your messages. Uh, a musical, like, I cannot read your name to save my life. Musical psychosis. What are your tips for helping immersed grown stems convert to submerged? I'm five days and two weeks from my fill. My Rotella, uh, that were immersed are showing new growth. Um, but your L super red is melting. Well, I may not be the person to ask that question. I don't like stems, personally. Um, I enjoy my aquascapes to be a little bit lower maintenance than stems require, so I tend to not use stems uh, whenever possible. Uh, but a thing that, especially since you're planting, and it sounds, yeah, and you're doing immersed growth, um, the way that I've gotten around having melt with stems is I actually float the stems in my water for a week or two, and that allows them to uh, get accustomed to the water quality that I have relative to what someone else has. Also brings them up nice and close to the uh, to the light, 
And because they, they've been trimmed, they start to produce roots, trying to seek out substrate so it allows a little bit easier transition later on. But since you're doing immersed growth, that obviously wouldn't work. I don't have a great suggestion for you. I wish I did. Um, yeah, Charlotte says, uh, keep the plants, they're melting, and that's part of the transition. I think that's also true, that oftentimes plants will die almost all the way back, but they'll still be okay. So, um, the other thing, not knowing your setup at all, uh, is aqua soil leaches a lot of ammonia when it's first exposed to water. So it's possible that you're getting burn on your plants. So even though it's immersed, even though you don't have a lot of water there, I would try to flush that water on a regular basis so that you aren't getting a water column that has too much nutrients in it. That's my like my guess of a possible cause as well. All right, so I'm going to go back to drawing a little bit. Uh, so I've got my, my hole in my, my root system that's going to form my cave. Uh, just in case people are new to this stream and haven't seen it before, this is an initial sketch that I worked on. I'm going to recreate it, um, but I'm going to make a few little changes to it. Um, right now, the things that I'm focusing on changing, uh, I want to have my roots be a little bit more chaotically oriented. I want it to feel a little bit more organic, but I want them to still be directional. And I'm switching my cave, which you can see here, into a root system cave. So it's actually uh, wood all the way through. So uh, I will let the comments do what they will for a second while I work on this. So let's see. I'm going to start making these look a little bit more like actual roots rather than just scribbles. If I was really good, I would look at my roots and figure out exactly which one I'm drawing at any given time. But I'm not really good. Just okay. This root, I think, is actually going to come from behind the mound, so I'm not going to draw the base of it. But it's, I, I happen to know this one is connected to that one. So it's actually going to go into the substrate here. Uh, this one maybe I'll point upwards a little bit. This one's going to cross it, cross in front of it. Come up here. There we go. Got another little stem coming up there. Don't need to draw that that dark because that's going to go behind behind my my system. There we go. So like that. And maybe I've got another one here. Kind of looks like that. Maybe. Maybe a little, a little more, one more stem sticking up over the back there. Maybe another, another stem sticking up like that over there. So we're starting to get a little feel for things. Now I need to start adding my rocks. Now I don't have huge rocks. Um, I'll, I'll show you. I have one rock here that's pretty much representative of the largest rocks that I have on hand. So I've got a bunch of rocks that are about this big, um, but nothing that's much bigger than that. And this looks like a pretty big rock, but it's, it's maybe eight inches, maybe nine inches from side to side. Um, maybe even smaller, it might be eight inches. Uh, so it's just not that big when you're talking about a 60 inch long scape. So that's what I've got to keep in mind as I, as I work on this. Is, I don't have that much rock to work with. Now, I'm thinking maybe I want a couple of rocks jutting out here. Um, looking at it, I don't think I have the right ratio. 
<sighs> I don't think I have the right ratio here of soil or of, of a, a floor um, of sand that I was after. This feels like this extends a little bit too far, but maybe not. Let's let's draw it out and see what it looks like. So basically I just want to create some rock structures here and there that kind of cover up the base of some of these roots. Some of the roots are going to be covered up with plants. Um, I don't want them to be too evenly spaced. And I'm thinking that my actual like secret substrate line underneath everything is probably about, about to there, let's say. So maybe I maybe I want some rocks there. Maybe a little rock there. I want a big old rock over here if I can have it. Maybe another one there. Maybe another one there. Kind of want to just cover up the base of this uh, this cave structure so that it it starts to disappear a little bit. Plus, we're talking about the interior of my mound or of my my scape over here where I need a little bit more weight. Um, I put another rock there um, yeah something like that this area is going to be all something bushy so there's not going to be any rocks in there um, and keeping in mind I've got to do this on both sides so <laughs> everything's kind of got to um, I've got to I've got to spread my my materials across two different sides. Um, so uh, Turtz creates asks what kind of rock is that? I assume that you're talking about the drawing, or maybe you're talking about what I held up. So this right here, uh, this is an example of the rock that I'm going to be using. This is elephant skin um, or elephant rock. Um, it's a nice, like relatively smooth rock with little crevices uh, that kind of look like elephant skin. It's a really nice detailed rock. The problem with it, if there is a problem with it, is that it's hard to combine multiple pieces of this together into one cohesive looking rock because it's actually pretty smooth. I know it looks rough, but the edges are actually pretty smooth. So with a lot of more jagged rocks, you can attach them together and all of that all the jagged creases kind of hide the edges where one rock meets another. With a rock like this with smoothed edges, it's really, really hard to join them together. So you're kind of left with one of two options. Either you don't, you don't join them together, or you hide those seams with plants. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be trying to hide those seams with plants. Uh, now, the problem with hiding the seams with plants is that if you don't do it right, you end up with strips of plants um, around your aquascape that are clearly covering up seams. So it's a balancing act, I'll say. Uh, over time, as the scape becomes bushier, those seams become less obvious. But yeah, um, elephant skin or elephant rock, um, that's the answer. What else we got here on this, this thing? Um, I am a good drawer. Thank you. You haven't even seen what I've... Well, I guess you, maybe you saw this. Um, but once this is colored in, it'll look nice and pretty, I think. So, introducing my fish in my tank too early before the plants could establish because my local fish only... Just back it up. Sorry, I'm reading a comment, but not coherently. Um... I introduced fish into my tank too early before the plants could establish because my local fish store only gets the specific fish like once a year and they sell fast. Now I have algae issues. Please give advice. It's a 20 gallon long and the fish are a pair of German blue rams. I was thinking to set up a 10 gallon that could use as both plant storage and temporary home for the fish if needed. This is a good idea. Um, and then you say, chat, please help me. Yet yeah, I'm the one that's reading it. So, um, for the most part, A, I'm not sure what type of algae you have, but
But for the most part, the algae shouldn't be a huge risk to the fish. Uh, I think, so there are a couple of solutions to the algae problem with your plants. One, uh, you should be doing a bunch more water changes. Uh, oftentimes the issue uh, with algae blooms in your aquarium can be solved by regular water changes. Um, you know, doing a 30 to 50% water change every day. Don't follow those specific numbers. Uh, do what works for you. But doing a, a heavy water change every day uh, for a couple of weeks, I know that sounds like a lot, but oftentimes what's happening, especially with a newly planted tank, is your substrate is releasing chemicals. I wanted to say off-gassing, uh, but that's not really the correct term. Um, but it's releasing chemicals into the water column, and that's providing an excess of nutrients, and that's what's causing the algae to get a stronghold. So if you do water changes, you're getting that nutrients out of the water column, and you're not giving the algae the chance to, to cling on, because the reality is that your plants are usually better at absorbing that nutrients than the algae is. Uh, they just need some time to establish and get their roots in the system. Uh, also, the substrate will slowly start to let off or leach less nutrients. So if you can just get through that process, you'll be okay. Um, and I, I don't know that your rams need to be moved, frankly, because um, they'll, they'll probably be more than happy with the regular water changes. Um, and they're not going to be hurt by the algae unless unless it's like unless it's a really really big problem where the fish are having trouble swimming because there's so much algae um it's probably okay you'll have to comment what type of algae you're experiencing are you going to be putting bags of lava rock under the soil to build on that's asked by darren um yes i am you're scooping one of the things I'm gonna talk about in my video that I'm gonna post in a few days. But yes, I have these, oh gosh. I have these bags um, with lava rock, crushed lava rock in them. You can kind of hear them. We can turn this into a nice ASMR video. Um, you can see that they kind of leak. Uh, um, they leak the little teeny particles of lava rock, uh, but that's okay. Uh, they're really, really great for building up your hardscape. And I've got about 70 of these bags already made. I'm going to use my paintbrush to actually brush my substrate out of the way. I'm going to have to vacuum after this. Because I just don't want to scratch up my table more than I already have. So I'm going to use the, my, my paintbrush to get all the crap out of the way. Ugh. really feel the grit that I've just dumped on my table. Bear with me. Okay. So yes, Darren, the answer is I am gonna use those bags. The bags are really great because A, they're inert. Um, so they're not gonna be contributing to any uh, issues with material entering the water column. But also uh, they take up a lot of space and they're relatively cheap. You can get a big bag of, of crushed lava rock for a couple bucks. Those bags that I just showed you, they're also really cheap. Um, and the whole combo, it certainly takes a little bit of while, time to fill them up, but you can build up a huge mass for, you know, 10% of the cost if you were to build it with aqua soil or, you know, hardscaping materials. So, you know, hot, hot tip of how to do that. But as I said, I will uh, be talking a lot more about that in the actual video that I post about the hardscaping materials. Um, Aqua Ninja Aquariums, do you think elephant stone is hard to escape with? Try guapa stone. I have 100 pounds of it. 1,000 pounds of it. You have 1,000 pounds of guapa stone. What is guapa stone? You'd think I'd know that, being a member of Guapa. I don't know what Guapa Stone is, though. Um, let's see what else we got here. People talking about how to get that algae out of the tank. 
Um, Blake's Aquatic, Aquatics, hey, glad to catch another stream. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Mary says, I can just imagine what you're going through trying to think everything through. This is going to be exciting to watch. It's going to be exciting and slow to watch. Uh, let's see if I can, oh gosh, oh. Yeah, it's going to be exciting and slow um, because it's going to take me a long time. Right now I have maybe a quarter of the plants that I need. Um, so it's going to be a long time, probably two months before I have this tank up and running. But hopefully, hopefully it'll look nice. So let's, I will, uh, I'll go back to the comments in a second, but I want to focus on what I'm doing here for a bit. So I want this tank to be largely uh, plants that are relatively slow growing, that are ideally not stems, frankly. Maybe there are some times where I want stems. Um, but for the most part, I don't really want at least fast growing stems. So, but I do want to still have a nice sense of flow. So one of the lovely plants that I'm thinking about is the old standard narrow leaf java fern. So I'm thinking, you know, filling in some narrow leaf java fern here. And this is where this drawing is going to start to get really messy. Um, I'm going to have to start coloring soon because if I don't, we're going to really lose context of what is happening here. So I'm thinking maybe filling in a lot of narrow leaf java fern up in here. Uh, just kind of filling that in there. Maybe have a couple more bushes of it down here. Maybe over here. Maybe a little bit there. Not too much. Just a little something. Um, so let's start the process by, by coloring in some of the java fern. So hopefully this will start to come alive. Is that the right green? We've got a bunch of markers here. I've got about 24 colored markers. And I'm trying to find the right marker that looks closest to the color of java fern. That feels right to me. So basically I'm just, you know, coloring it in. Filling in my java fern. My big bushes of java fern. Up in here. I don't want to color too low. Now we're getting into an art class, but I don't want to color too low because there's probably going to be something that covers up the base of that java fern. Who knows what that is right now, but it'll be something. So I don't want to color too low. A little bit popping in there. Maybe a nice chunk there. Something there. I said I wanted a little bit down here, so let's let's cover that in. Got a little bit of it drooping down so that it, you know, properly feels like Java fern. A little bit in there. Okay. So uh, Dylan asks, needle leaf over narrow any day? Um, that's not a question, that's a statement. I've misconstrued what Dylan wrote. Uh, Dylan wrote, needle leaf over narrow leaf any day. I don't think you're wrong. Um, I certainly like needle leaf a lot, uh, but narrow leaf, I mean, there's not a huge difference, frankly. Um, narrow leaf is way easier to get your hands on. So I'm going to go with narrow leaf because I can get it. Um, I can get it much easier than I can needle leaf. Um, I was actually thinking maybe trident. Trident java fern could be a nice look as well with the multiple uh, tips. That could be uh, a nice setup. Um, so now let's think what else I want to add into this system. I said I wanted some patches of carpet. So maybe, maybe now's the time to think about that. So maybe I want a little bit of a rock to block there. And then I kind of want a carpet right, right in there. Maybe I block this off with some, some rocks. And then I've got a little carpet right there. That could look potentially interesting. 
Now this is not for like a photo competition. This is mainly for me to look at. So I, I maybe want something that captures the imagination a little bit. This, this could look really nice wrapped around my hardscape potentially. Um, maybe I want a little bit of Monte Carlo kind of trickling down, wrapping around my, my hardscape. A nice little thing there. Yeah, I, I like that idea. Maybe I'll put another patch of it right over here. Just a little patch. Something to, to catch the eye. Um, because you don't want every you don't want a plant that's just in one spot. That, that can look kind of weird, I think. Uh, now I also, while I'm thinking about it, I want to figure out where am I going to put my, um, where am I going to put my? There's a word and it's not coming to me. My tiger lotus. Where am I going to put my tiger lotus? So, hmm. One thought is I could put it over here as a nice little patch. Just thinking this through. Yeah, that feels right. Um, so I was thinking maybe I could put the tiger lotus over here. And the reason why I'm going to side against that is because there's so much weight already on this side of the aquarium that the tiger lotus really draws the eye. So maybe having it over here will try to catch people's attention and bring a little bit more weight to this side of the tank without uh, adding actual weight in the form of rocks or, or a larger mound. So I'll just draw those in there. The leaves are not circular, they're kind of rounded, kind of heart shape. Maybe, maybe I'll let a couple of them extend upward. I don't know if that's a great idea. But, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it does not, it's not a good look. But let's be real, that's probably what's going to happen. I'm probably going to let them extend upward because I am lazy. So let's see. How am I going to draw the tiger lotuses? Knowing that they have an orangish hue. That feels actually not bad. So. Let's draw in my tiger lotuses here. I'll add a little hint of red to each one and then a little hint of green to each one. So we get the idea of what we're looking at. So maybe, yeah. Uh, this particular variety of tiger lotus uh, was given to me by friend of mine named Gazenfar who affectionately refers to them as clown vomit tiger lotus um, and that's because they've got kind of a, a mixture of colors on each leaf and they look kind of like clown vomit um, so drawing these little stems there we go yeah all right let's see what else what comments do we have as I as I draw away? Um, Charlotte says algae is a part of a new tank. It should take care of itself. Black out the tank for three days will also kill algae. It also makes a good place for beneficial bacteria. So yeah, uh, I think there are a couple of different solutions to algae. Uh, one of them is certainly blacking out the tank. Um, blacking out the tank is kind of the equivalent of chemo on a, on a planted tank. Uh, you need to keep it blacked out long enough that it kills the algae, but not so long that it kills the plants that you want to stick around. So the first step I would try is doing really heavy water changes on a regular basis. And if that doesn't work, then transitioning to a blackout where you don't let any light in for a few days is a good solution. And Depending on the species of algae, some of them it only takes a couple of days. Um, with some algaes, it can take longer to, to black them out, but it's, it's certainly possible. Um, you can get 25 pounds of lava rock for four bucks at a rock supply yard. Just make 
be sure to rinse the hell out of it. it took me three hours to clean it. Um, yeah, uh, Lava Rock is super cheap. It's probably the cheapest rock that you can get. It's also pretty light, which is great because you don't want to use a really, really heavy rock to fill up space in your aquarium. So Lava Rock does a lot of great things there. Um, I was just going to comment Java Fern, but then you said it. Load it with boost. So Lakes Aquarium says load it with boost. Um, I do have a couple of bunches of boosts that are, are going to go in this tank. And I debated really strongly whether or not I wanted to do that. And the reason why I debated whether or not I was going to do that is because I don't want to encourage boosts of Alandra uh, in the hobby too much. And that's because it's cheaper to get wild collected boosts. And people usually end up doing that. And Boost of Alandra is not being collected in a sustainable way. Um, so I don't want to encourage people to buy wild caught boosts because it is leading to its depletion and probably eventual extinction in the wild. But if you're willing to spend a little bit more money and get farm raised, and you have to be careful because a lot of people claim that it's farm raised when it's not. Farm raised or tissue culture boosts, uh, I think that's a great solution. And boost is a really wonderful plant. So um, I do have some, and I've I've decided that I'm going to include some of it in the tank. Turts creates says, how about some hair grass? So I am thinking about whether or not I want to include uh, my favorite guapa grass into this setup. It's about a 10 inch tall hair grass. Um, and that's really dependent on whether or not it feels like it's too similar to my java fern. And I honestly don't know the answer until I, you know, plant it. I don't have a lot of guapa grass right now though. So I'd have to probably buy some some hair grass and I'm I'm just not sure. I might add I might add some hair grass later on. Um Wild boost be bad, Cloud9 says. I agree. Wild boost is bad. Don't don't buy wild boost. Um Yeah, don't do it. It's just don't do it. Um in Australia we don't have much wild boost, too much distance, uh to my knowledge anyway. I have 15 types, high beast grown. Yeah, so I think if you're getting it from a hobbyist that grew it, like at some point, all boosts came from the wild, obviously. Um, it's just tough. It's a it's a tough thing. I, I certainly have boosts that I've gotten from friends. I have boosts that I bought many years ago before I knew the... Just heard a voice. Um, before I knew, um, and I feel bad about that. But I'm actually probably going to do a live stream about boost and setting up a boost tank in the next few weeks. So if you want to hear me gripe about boost of Alandra, uh, subscribe or, you know, uh, who's watching that's not subscribed? Stay subscribed uh, because I, I've got gripes. So uh, next up, let's see. I'm going to fill a lot of this tank with Anubius. Anubius is a wonderful shade tolerant, shade loving plant with nice broad leaves. Um, it's about the same color value as Java Fern, which is too bad. Um, but yeah, that's okay. So let's figure out. Maybe I want some Anubius in here. Maybe some in there. Let's see, maybe I want a nice big clump there. Maybe I want some on this particular large root right in there. Uh, maybe a little bit more right in there. Hmm. Um, yeah, maybe I want a little bit right in there underneath my java fern. Just filling in that hole. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
kind of work. Let's see, is there a color that I can give my, my Anubius that feels okay? I might use this color even though this isn't a this isn't ideal, but I want to show that there is a little bit of a difference between my Anubius and my Java Fern. So hopefully you guys can see this. Just coloring it in. This is way too dark for Anubius. That's okay. Just trying to show a variety of shapes in the mix. Maybe I'll color it in again with a lighter green and add a little bit of pops of color into the, to the mix around it. Yeah, that's looking okay. What kind of plan, or lights do I plan on using? Um, I am planning on using some UNS lights. Uh, I am waiting for them to show up in the mail, so I will get to you on exactly what I am going to use later. But I'm planning on using a couple of UNS lights. Right now, I am using a Build My LED four foot uh, LED strip. It's a great LED. Uh, it's really, really wonderful. It might actually be just strong enough for the tank, but it's it's like right on the edge of whether or not it would be usable. So instead of constantly fighting with, with whether or not it's quite strong enough, I'm going to use some UNS lighting. Um, I do really love my Build My LED light, though. Unfortunately, uh, they used to build lights, build my LED. They used to build aquarium lights, um, but they have since transitioned into building horticulture lights, like lights for grow lights. Um, so they're not super relevant into the aquarium hobby anymore. Uh, but I have been clinging on to that light for six, six or seven years now, um, because it's just, it's great. So even if I don't have a tank that fits it, I'm unwilling to ever let it go because I know that I can't get a new one. All right, let's start thinking about let's start thinking about this wood because the wood's wood's not really showing much. So I'm going to start by coloring in the wood with some brown, um, and then I'll darken it up with a darker brown in a second. I'm not going to color it all in. I'm going to color in only the sections that I'm confident aren't going to get covered up by some other plant later on. So I know I want my cave to be visible. I don't want that to be covered up with plants. So we'll leave that visible. This one, maybe go that deep. This one I think is gonna hide behind some stuff, so we'll only color it in that much. This one we are gonna cover it, color in a little bit up till maybe there. We'll see what happens after that. This one, similarly, let's color it into there. Oops, sorry. It's colored in. Maybe this one's peeking up above there. This big stick is right there. Yeah, so we're starting to get something coming together. Huh, what else do I want? So I also have uh, some, so admittal, I am dyslexic. Uh, words are hard. Uh, remembering scientific names is really, really hard for me. Pinophidia? Phidia? It's a lovely plant. Um, it's a stem plant, but it doesn't really look like a stem plant. It actually looks more like a rhizome plant. Um, it's a lovely plant with lobed uh, compound leaves. I don't think they're actually technically compound. Because compound, 
We don't need to get into a botany conversation, but I don't think it's technically compound, but it looks compound. It looks almost like a fern. Uh, it's a lovely plant. It's got a got a hint of orange and red when it's when it's really really happy um, when it's doing really well. So I'm trying to figure out what color do I want that to look like. So I want to start with a with a light light green and then we'll accent it a little bit. So where do I want? Where do I want that to show up in the system? Probably want some bunches of it. Maybe I'll put a bunch over here. It's a nice little filler on that side. Fill in over here with a bunch of it. Fill in some of these interior sections. Yeah, something like that. So I've, I've now lost which marker I highlighted. Wasn't that one. Um, which one did I want to use? Let's go with that one. So we're going to do a nice light, light pass. Right in there, right in there. And then we'll add a little bit of an accent color in the mix. Add a little bit of a little bit of that. Hopefully, we'll turn a little bit red. So I also have some crypts. I want to throw some crypts in. We'll maybe put them down at the base down here. Maybe another one in there. Maybe maybe another little crypt right in between those rocks. Maybe we want something right in there potentially and we'll say that that crip is a nice nice mid-level green with a little bit of brown so we'll we'll add that in like that right there, there we go just kind of filling in with texture here and there the little specifics aren't super important. Just kind of give a little bit of a feel of what this whole system is going to end up looking like ultimately. Maybe I add just a hint of red on some of these because they're going to be nice little beautiful crypts, right? They're going to be their best version of the crypt. Uh, so we're starting to get kind of a hot mess situation. Um, so this is where like line work is really helpful to start filling in my lines. Uh, but before I do that, I want to start filling in my rocks. So let's say that that's a rock, that's a rock. Get some rock there. A little rock there. Rock there. Rock there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we'll fill in a little bit of shade on some of those rocks. Nothing too fancy, just just a little something so that they, they look a little three-dimensional. All right, now I'm going to start going in and drawing in my sticks. I'm going to start really line working this out so that it looks a little bit more defined. Unfortunately, my pin's not cooperating great. So let's see. What other options do I have? Can I use this? Let's try using this. Yeah, this pin's dying too. Look, I'm doing it live. It is what it is. Yeah. Just 
filling in my rocks. Having a grand old time. So uh, does anyone have any questions for me while I do this? Uh, so I'm going to try to keep talking while I do this because I know that the whole point of a live stream is that people are supposed to actually, you know, fill that dead air. But if anyone has any questions for me, uh, I'm happy to answer them. I can answer them while I fill in this drawing. So... Um, I brought some java fern and now there's a snail explosion yeah there's not a lot you can do about that um well there is <laughs> you you buy um plants from a a place that doesn't have snails um if you buy plants from someone that grows their java fern in a snail free facility or grows their ferns immersed uh that can work well um but yeah, if you're if you're buying your Java fern from a friend, or from a retailer that sells plants that were usually shipped from Florida and then shipped to their facility and then shipped a second time to you, there's a good chance that you're going to have snails, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Uh, I guess you could bleach dip. Um, if you add a little bit of bleach to water, you can briefly dip those plants in water and then wash them off. And that'll help to kill the snails. Um, oftentimes what's what's surviving is not necessarily live snails. Um, it may be eggs. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I haven't heard grand old time in a while. Did I say grand old time? I probably did. That does sound like something I would say. Um, get some pea puffers and loaches. Those will eat snails up. You're right. Those will eat snails. Uh, snails up. Are you planning any more collabs with Rachel O'Leary? Love her. That's from Robert Forrest. I am. I am planning a collaboration with Rachel and it's happening this sat or no, nope, this Thursday. Uh, I am going to have her on a live stream this Thursday. Uh, so I will be announcing that formally in the next day or two. Um, but yeah, Rachel's going to come on. We're going to talk about maybe Summer Tubbin maybe a little bit about how fish room has evolved over the years we've known each other for i think four years now uh so i've known her for a while um and it's it's been lovely to watch her hobby evolve as she's gotten more and more into plants um she's always had some plants but when i first met her when i first went to her fish room there were uh, a fair number of plants, but it, it certainly wasn't every plant was plant or every tank was planted. It was kind of some some tanks had some stuff, some tanks didn't have anything. That was back when she was doing a lot more selling of fish, and that's very understandable because when you're selling the fish, you kind of need to be able to catch them relatively quickly, and plants make it sure hard to catch fish. <laughs> Fish really love being able to hide in plants. Um, so, you know. Anyway, I am planning on having Rachel on. So thanks for uh, asking that question. That's a nice uh, organic opportunity for me to plug in this upcoming Thursday at 7 p.m. Come hang out with me again. Um, have I ever seen Ohio Fish Rescue? I have seen Ohio Fish Rescue. Uh, I am not a big fish person. Um, yeah, that's, that's it for me on that. So I'm not subscribed to them. I understand what they do. Um, I have no disparaging like comments on what they do. I think it's admirable to be taking in fish, uh, but it doesn't really interest me. Um, and I say that not maliciously, just it's not my cup of tea. I, as I'm sure aquascaping probably doesn't super resonate with them. Although maybe it does. I uh, am, am ignorant as to what their interests are. Maybe I'll have them on at some point and talk with them because big fish, monster fish, is just not something that's ever appealed to me. So um, I'd be interested to hear a perspective of someone that it does resonate with them. Um, yeah. So 
I think I'm, I'm kind of caught up with everyone. So looking at this tank that I built here, it's way fuller. For sure it's way fuller than this one. This definitely has a more artsy feel. Um, it's more graphic. This one feels more, you know, organic to some degree. So I'm going to color in my backdrop uh, and allow us to see what this would look like because it's easy to, uh, the blue helps pop like what exactly is happening versus, you know, saying, oh, I don't know, maybe Alex just forgot to color in that section. Um, the blue will help fill in those sections and say, oh, yep, that's, that's what's going on there. So now I'm going to go over it with a nice light green. And I'm going to fill in all those little, those little holes. Imagining that I'll find some little plants that will make a nice little home in those little spots. Maybe we're talking about um, maybe we're talking about boosts, little bits of boosts. Maybe we're talking about uh, little chunks of I don't know chain sword. Uh, yeah, just something something to fill in those little sections and make them all come together. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color in substrate. Now the substrate is going to be white, but I don't have a white marker. So I'm just going to use a little bit of yellow to lightly shade in the substrate right there. And there you go. So let's, let's add a few little texture lines to my wood so that you can see. Oh yeah, that's, that's nice old wood with directional growth. All right, that's what's happening here. Directional growth. There we go. So you can see as oops, sorry, I touched the mic again. As we pan across the, the tank, got a nice little setup there. It's a little bit busy, um, but it should really come alive. It should feel feel really really full. Um, it's definitely a very different look than this one, in spite of the fact that they're kind of similar setups. So I'm going to actually see if I can expand this one a little bit um, so that you can see both, both at the same time. Can I do it? I think I can. There we go. All right, there we go. Two different versions of the same approach. How do we feel about this? Do we like the one that we just spent an hour and a half drawing or do we like the one that I showed up with at the start of this? Let me know, A or B, all right? An A or B, which one? You can't see that. A or B? Yeah. Let me know which one you like better. In the meantime, I will uh, I will go into back up in the chat and see some stuff. Pub three fourteen says they do have some medium size and small fish. I clearly I have not watched their channel. I need to check them out. I can't comment. <laughs> um, Robert says too many large fish are sold for the wrong reasons. I agree. Um, largely, I think, uh, you know, fish are stuck in a little box and you should try to get the smallest fish for the biggest box. So if you want a medium sized fish, you need a giant box. And if you want a giant fish, you need a box that's frankly probably too big for your home. That's, that's my two cents, but, um, you know, I, I've never tried to keep a jar, large fish, so I can't speak from experience on that. Um, Robert asks, have you ever done a collab with Joey King of DIY? Or are you planning one? Um, I would love to. Uh, 
Joey and I have met a couple of times. Um, we are casual friends, I would say. Um, I think he respects my work. I respect his work. I would love to collaborate with him. Uh, if this world situation had not arisen, I probably would have, you know, asked him if I could come up and visit him sometime in the spring once his studio is all, or his gallery is all set up. Um, maybe I'll do that in the fall. Maybe I'll do that in the winter. I don't know. But I would love to uh, make a cinematic film of his of his fish room one day. Um, if for no other reason than I, I'm kind of curious to see it myself. Um, I've seen it on video a bunch, and I'd love to know exactly how big it feels when you're there. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Robert says, bottom is much better. Okay, well, I'm sorry for wasting your time. Um, <laughs> that sounded bitter. I apologize. Uh, Cloud says, I like A. Ted's Fish Room says A. Dan says A. Um, Monica says, I really enjoy your live streams. They are so relaxing. I like A. I'm glad they are relaxing. That is my goal. I want this to be a lovely uh, evening option. Um, I'm going to continue doing these live streams every Monday and Thursday until uh, the world gets better. So for, for now, uh, I'm still going to be making regular videos, but I am going to try to do live streams every Monday and Thursday uh, and try to be a calming, calming presence on the internet. Uh, the A-Cave is epic. The A-Cave is epic. Hmm. I'm going to do something that I regret. I'm going to go show you that piece of wood. I'm not going to take you with me, but I'll be back in a second. All right, so this is the piece of wood that that cave is based on. Hopefully you can see through it, but there's a nice little hole. I can't really tell if you can see it, um, but it's there. I'll uh, put it on the table as well. But you can see this nice hole sticking right through the pieces of wood. There's actually a couple of holes. So there's potential there to build something really cool. And it's, it's about, maybe six or seven inches deep from front to back. So that's a nice like cave depth as well. Like I think there's something really, really valuable with this. And since I have it on the table, I, there's some thread tied around it. Um, the thread, I was trying to attach some, some moss. Uh, I took the, the wood out of the tank before the moss attached and the thread is still there. I think that says to me that this thread was too good. The thread should have decomposed long before before that, because I think I tied this thread around probably a year ago, frankly. So probably used too good a thread that was too unwilling to break down. But you can see, you know, this wood is showing the signs of age. It's a couple of, gosh, I think I bought it in 2012 maybe. It's been underwater ever since then. When I bought it, it was much bigger. It was probably an inch in every direction wider. Uh, but all of the time in the aquarium, it slowly decomposed. My bristle nose pleco has slowly eaten away at everything. So yeah, um, I'll put this back up and show you again. It's a pretty big piece of wood. Um, I really love this piece of wood. This is kind of the inspiration for the whole tank. Um, I bought all my other wood to support this piece of wood. So, yeah. Uh, let's let's go back to the chat. Uh, scrolling back up. Sharon. Uh, Bedston, I apologize, that is not how you pronounce your last name. Um, 
A will become B in time. Oh, come on, refocus. Uh, a will become B in time. I don't know about that. I feel like B will become A in time. Um, this feels like the chaos that will eventually form from a very pristine aquascape of B. But I could be wrong. Um, the new one is better, A. Thank you. I think the new one, my, well, I don't know. I'll have to think on it. Um, Apathios? Let's say that's how you pronounce that username. B. Um, Ginger says just off work. Hi, folks. Hi, Ginger. Um, you missed me drawing for an hour and 40 minutes. So uh, there's that to catch up on if you really want to. Um, I like lighter and more minimal. Um, yeah, so this is Apathos again. Uh, I like lighter and more minimal. I totally can see that. Uh, the other thing is that even though these don't look that different, this probably represents three or four times more plants than this one does. So it's kind of a matter of what I can actually get my hands on and afford, frankly. Um, in an ideal world, I'd love to have this set up, but this feels more accessible <laughs> um, given the restrictions of a budget. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, Robert says, I agree. That could be to anything, but I'm glad that you're supportive of either something I said or something someone else said. Um, so Cloud9 says, a lot of A's. Uh, Monica says, I got out my markers and pencils again and drawing really helps with stress. Nice live stream. Great. Um, the gallery model is going to be awesome. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think, I think uh, Joey's gallery model is going to be really cool. Um, Sharon says, oops, reverse that B. B will become A in time. Yeah, that's, I agree. There, now we're on the same page. Um, Pup314 says, lol, you're a better artist than I am. Never a waste of time watching someone do art. Great. Um, what stim plants? Oh, gosh. What stim plants? Nope. I've lost it again. We'll get there eventually. What stim plants would you recommend for a high flow tank? Well, is it a high light tank? Is it a CO2 tank? Um, high flow certainly is great for a lot of stem plants because a major problem that you have with stems is that you end up with dead areas. The stems block so much of the flow that you end up with really low circulation in the area that the stems are in, which creates a breeding ground for algae because the plants aren't getting a constant flow of oxygen or a constant flow of water, which means they aren't getting enough CO2, which means they stop, um, you know, consuming all the nutrients because they're kind of suffocating. Um, so a high flow makes stems a lot easier. So I think that you're in good shape if you have high flow. Uh, just match that with decent lighting um, and maybe CO2, depends. Um, there are a lot of stems that can grow without CO2. Um, so I don't have an answer for you, but it sounds like you're off to a good start. Um, D from Brooklyn says, no, that's a tree. It is a large piece of driftwood. Um, yes, my my big piece of driftwood is it's large. It's actually a little bit more than two feet tall. It's about 18 inches front. To, no, it's, I think it's about 22 inches front to back. Um, and then it's 12 inches the other direction. So it's a big hunk of piece of wood. It probably weighs 35 pounds. Um, yeah. Uh, Awesome piece of driftwood. Uh, what kind of wood is that? Uh, it looks like it's Malaysian driftwood. It is Malaysian driftwood. So that's the inspiration for this whole setup is doing Malaysian driftwood. Um, I want to embrace the look of Malaysian wood. I love it. That's it's my favorite wood. Um, would you place that wood on its side with the whole face so you could see through front to back? Yeah, that's the plan. Um, would you place that wood on its side with the whole face so you can see through it front to back? 
That is the plan. I'm confused by your question. That's what this is about. So I'm wondering, do you mean like lay it down like that? Because I could do that as well and have the plants kind of growing up through it. That could be interesting. Or have it be on one side of the tank. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that you could do with this piece. It's, I mean, it's the best piece of wood I've got by far. Um, B is more architecturally pleasing. Cool. I like B, but the jungle still in A looks interesting too. Um, since the tank is peninsula in the room, um, peninsula in the room, since the tank is a peninsula in the room, A, if you want more solid divider in the room, B, if you want to leave the whole space looking more open. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, my apartment is not small, but it's not large either. Uh, and the tank is definitely a dominating presence. I know that um, I will cut to a little video of my of my room. Um, uh, that's that's pretty much two thirds of my apartment. Um, so it definitely dominates the space. Um, so figuring out what I'm going to do with it, um, whether or not I want it to be a true room divider or not. I think is a big question. Monica, thank you so much for your super chat, um, for your budget to make the cre your creations. Thank you. Um, really and truly, that is that does mean a lot because, uh, yeah, setting up these things definitely consumes most, if not all, of the ad revenue I generate on this channel. So this is definitely a break-even proposition on the best of times. Um, so thank you. That means a lot. That'll help me help me do more stuff for tank tested um uh mary says i really enjoy hanging out and learning um myself someday i hope i can offer some ideas instead of spectating uh i mean i think that you can offer ideas from the perspective of what you like and what you don't like uh so uh, i don't know if you guys know this if you've gone to my website um you can always email me um, I have a like little form that you can fill out on my website. So if there are tanks that you really want to show me, um, just send them my way. Um, I'm happy to reply to most emails I get there within a somewhat reasonable timeline. <laughs> I'm not great at responding to emails, uh, but I do, I do try to check my email on a somewhat regular basis. Um, Yeah. If you ever get a hold of some South American ironwood, get some. It is heavy and dense, and dead trees can take a hundred plus years to decay, even in water. Um, South African ironwood. I don't know what that is, but I will take that into consideration. Um. What do I need to do to keep water so clear? Water changes. So uh, that's actually transitioning into the problem with this wood. So this big old hunk of wood, it has been in my aquarium since 2014, I think. And it wasn't until 2018 that it didn't stop dyeing my water brown. Uh, I suspect that I'm going to have that same problem when I add a bunch of Malaysian driftwood into my aquarium. I'm going to end up in a situation where every week my aquarium looks like tea. And there's not a lot I can do about that. The good thing is uh, the plants are relatively unaffected by that and uh, the fish are from black water. I'm going to plan on having all Amazonia fish. They're from black water. Uh, they'll be totally content. They'll probably actually act more natural in a black water setup. So maybe I will show you guys the tank as a black water tank and sometimes as a clear water tank. And that's totally dependent on when I do water changes. So uh, look forward to that. That'll be a weird experience for a couple of years. Um, so when you have the wood lying on the table, you have an opening facing the camera. Rotate it 90 degrees is what I meant. Ooh, I see. I understand what you mean now. Um, 
Can I do that? I can't. Uh, the wood is too tall. It does not fit under my camera. Um, that is as close as I can get to rotating at 90 degrees. I can rotate it 180 degrees and show it the other side of what it looks like. Oh, you can't see it. I'm on the wrong screen. There we go. So that's, that's what it looks like from the other side. Um, it's got a nice little setup. You can see a, some of the dead moss that was once on the tree or once on this piece of wood. Um, but if I rotate it 90 degrees so that it's upright, it doesn't fit underneath my camera. I mean, you can see that. Um, yeah. So I don't know that I have time to draw another aquarium. Um, hmm. So I'm debating what to do with my time. Uh, I could end the live stream now. Or we could tinker with a couple of other ideas I've been playing with. What do you guys think? Would you like me to do another like really, really quick drawing? Or do you feel like you've gotten enough tonight? Let me know. Um, I think I know what the other version is that I'd tinker with tonight. So I have an idea. I will, I will wait for you guys to... Uh, to let me know. Also, while I wait, um, if you're watching this and you have not liked the video, please like the video. Um, there are 70 or 47 people watching and 48 likes. And I know that all of you have not been here the whole time. So please like this video. Um, it actually does cause YouTube to show it to more people. And I would like more people to see it. I'm just tinkering with a piece of wood. I keep forgetting that you can actually see what I'm doing with my hands. Please, another drawing. One more would be nice. Okay, I will do one more drawing. Um, if you have to go, I understand. Um, but I think one more drawing would be nice. So, we're going to do a two island setup. That's my other option that I'm thinking with. So, let's refocus the camera. Why is there now a shadow? Was there always a shadow there? What is this a shadow from? Is it my camera? It is my camera. Um, I'm sorry, guys, that there's always been this shadow here. Gosh, I've got wood everywhere. All right, so what I'm thinking is a two island setup. Let's start this by outlining my tank again. Um, I think that was helpful last time. Now this setup is going to require way, way less plants. It's a less, uh, or it's a less um, impactful aquascape, I think, but it, it's probably easier to maintain, requires less plants, and it's closer to something that people could do at home without spending all of their money which is important because, you know, these things are expensive. <laughs> um, this tank is, is, I mean, realistically, this tank is uh, a many, many thousands of dollars set up. Um, can you draw a cat? What is the wood shown in the tank? I didn't get a good look. Um, I can draw a cat. I'm not going to draw a cat. I am a decent drawer, um, but... Uh, I'm not going to draw a cat. What is the wood in the tank? The tank is Malaysian driftwood. Uh, what would a product like uh, para, paragen? I know that word, but I don't know what it is. Um, be safe to use it in a setup like this to help with tannins. Um, you're going to have to forgive me. This is not a thing that I know at all. So I'm not going to forget pretend like I do. Sorry. Um, all right, so two island setup. This is a five foot tank. Um, so we're gonna create a little island mass here, uh, a little island mass here. I actually have a little sketch that I'm operating on 
what I've already drawn up, but you guys don't get to see it. I'm not gonna show you where we're going with this. So I'm thinking that, again, I don't wanna have too much substrate. I want just a thin layer of sand uh, because I don't plan on planting the bottom of the tank. So basically just a little thin little layer of sand. And then I want at least, at least eight inches between my two islands. Um, oh, I'm too zoomed out. Bear with me. I zoomed out for the other video, and I want this to be a little bit more legible of what I'm doing. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit in a second. It'll all be clearer. -er. It'll all be clearer. -er. I zoomed in too much. All right. Let's call that good, and we will... There we go. That's a little bit better? I think that's a little bit better. So I want about eight inches between these two. Uh, and then I want at least, eh, probably, probably another eight inches on either side uh, so that I have a solid section between each of my islands. Um, now the bulk of each island is gonna be in the center, right? Which makes sense. And you might think, like, what is my game plan here? Well, I've got my Malaysian driftwood, so I am going to um, use it. So we're going to start with the big piece of wood that's just off camera. And let's say that we'll have it kind of go up at an angle over here, maybe like, maybe like that. Um, got our little little hole, got a couple of pieces of wood sticking out from it, kind of like that. So hopefully you can see that, hopefully I've drawn it with a heavy enough hand that you can see what I've done. And then maybe we'll put another piece like that, kind of sticking out. Uh, maybe another little, little, little nub little nub of wood down there and a little nub of wood down there. So that's one island. This feels a little bit too chunky. So maybe it's more like that. And then on the other island, uh, maybe we'll have a couple of other, other sticks coming out. Kind of like that, maybe something there, maybe a piece like that, maybe that one's got a couple of edges like this, maybe another little nub there, a little, little nub there. So we've got our two little islands. Um, so that's what I'm starting off with. Uh, kind of maybe a little bit too same same. Maybe I want a little bit less weight on this one. Um, not too much, but maybe maybe something like that. Yeah, something a little bit less intense on this one. Yeah. All right. So we're so we're sitting here. Um, let's see how people feel about this. How do you guys feel about this so far? Uh, Ginger, thanks so much for, for a $10 super chat. That means a, a lot to me as we already talked about. Um, it, it powers my ability to, to do things like this. So thank you so much. Um, cloud nine, maybe make it asymmetrical. So that's an option. Uh, obviously it's not an option I've chosen right this time, um, but it might be an option for a future, future sketch of an aquascape. So, uh, I will put that in like the brain of a thing to do in the future. Um, mono style. 
Uh, are you saying that this is a mono style or are you saying that I should do a mono style? Uh, this kind of was actually initially based on Amano's uh, famous tank that, that was in his home um, when he passed away. It's a giant aquarium right now. It's very, uh, it's not overgrown, but it's completely covered in uh, needle leaf, no, narrow leaf java fern. Or it might actually be java fern. It's that big that it could just be straight java fern. It's really incredible. Obviously, I can't replicate that perfectly, but I want to do something kind of, kind of, not referencing it, but inspired by it. Um, uh, Pup3114, I was visualizing it with the flat end against the side glass, short end, lying on its side with the opening facing the long sides. I see what you're saying. I understand now. I now... It's taken like a half hour, but I do understand what you were trying to say. <laughs> um, yeah, that could that could work. I could see that working. Um, wouldn't flow be an issue with the wood so high? Um, so I have two inflows, one on either side. And this would be in the center. So basically I'd be pushing water around either side of it. Um, my intention wouldn't necessarily be for this to take up the full two feet horizontally. Um, but you're right, flow could be an issue. I could be creating a blockade where I'm getting a lot of flow on this side of the tank and almost none on that side of the tank. And then I need to come up with another solution. It's possible that this would be better mirrored where the bigger island is on this side and the smaller island is on this side. Um, that would feel kind of weird to me because I kind of want the weight up against the wall. But it's possible that for flow reasons that, that could be necessary. Um, core of the wood on the same plane or offset. So are you saying basically on the short end, would I have them be kind of like staggered? Potentially. Um, very potentially. So let's think through what my, my hey, what, what am I doing with rocks and what am I doing with plants? So I definitely want to build up a rock base here. I want to have something where basically all of these pieces of wood are emerging from a rock structure. Maybe I have a piece of rock there, something there. Maybe, maybe something there, another piece like that, maybe, maybe a little bit there, maybe a couple pieces like that. So starting to get an idea of kind of what I'm thinking in terms of rock work. Something that just feels kind of like two little piles. Now starting to fill in my hardscape or my my plants hmm so the islands are a little bit tougher because I've, I've essentially i'm not leaving a lot of room for much other than like frankly java fern java fern feels like what this wants like basically it wants all of this area to kind of just be java fern. I want all of that to be filled in with java fern. Um, maybe you want some of it down here. I mean, this is this is definitely a very different feeling tank. Maybe I want um, I want my my tiger lotus kind of filling in here. Kind of again balancing out the heavier side of my scape over here. So maybe I want something like that. Again, java fern, needle leaf or narrow leaf java fern kind of filling in these chunks. It just kind of looks like scribbles right now. Um, what Puff 13, what type of rocks do I plan on using? I plan on using elephant stone. So 
this is pretty much what the stone will look like. All right, um, let's let's start sketching in some stuff or start coloring in soon. Now, knowing that I've got this whole setup, maybe I want to um, add moss to some of these branches. Actually, that could look really nice. That could be a really beautiful approach. Moss, especially this high up, for me at least, right up against the surface, tends to attract algae. It tends to be a trap for it because um, it slows down the movement of water. It's not super fast growing. It doesn't absorb a lot of nutrients. So it's a great place for the algae to cling on to and outcompete. Um, so that's a concern that I have, but you know, overcomable for sure. Uh, and down here, maybe I want a bunch of Anubias just floating around down here, filling in all these holes. Kind of just being, being Anubias, being around Anubias. All right, I'm gonna start coloring. Because I'm an adult and I'm allowed to color if I want. I'm choosing to color. So let's start with our Anubias down at the base. We'll kind of fill this in. Bunches of Anubias. I historically have not been a huge fan of Anubias, um, just because I found it kind of boring. Um, I also, so it's a rhizome plant and basically the rhizome just keeps adding one leaf after another after another and at some point you just end up with a really really long rhizome with a bunch of leaves and basically the late stage of anubias doesn't appeal to me that much i think as a young plant it's very pretty but as it gets older it doesn't look that appealing and you can overcome that by snapping that rhizome every two to three leaves and you just keep on getting more and more anubias um so that's a way to overcome it um but I just, it's not a plant that super resonates with me. That said, in a tank this size, I knew that it was definitely an option that I needed to go with. Uh, right now it's a little bit too same same. It's at the same level the whole time. So I need to break it up and kind of give it some options to kind of crawl up and make it escape from the bottom of the tank. Now let's see, I've got my java fern. What a color do I want my java fern to be? Let's go with this. So java fern, it's filling in all these holes. Looking nice, looking nice and java ferny. Uh, it's gonna have to come from somewhere though. So I guess it's gonna have to grow on this wood to some degree, maybe it's Bursting out there. Let's also over here. There we go. Just checking in, seeing if everyone's still there. Anyone got any questions for me? Any concerns, thoughts, strong feelings of any kind? So there we go. Yeah, something like that. That feels okay. Now let's color in our lovely piece of tiger lotus, the plant that I can never recall the name of. So we're going to cover it in with a little bit of pink here and here. Add a little bit of green to fill in the rest of it. A nice little clown vomit kind of kind of plant. There we go. It's a little bit darker than that, so I'll add little hints of red into the mix so that we get it properly documented. All right. Now I also want to add in. I'll, I'll take a pause and, and see if we've got any questions here. Lots of questions. Well, lots of comments. Um, maybe a little symmetrical? Ted's fish room. Um, so Ted will also be in a live stream soon. 
uh, Ted is a great guy who has his own fish room. He also um, does a lot of a lot of great stuff with custom aquariums. Um, he's kind of the reason why I have this big 150 gallon tank. So special thanks to Ted. Go check him out. Um, What style of rock do you plant? Yeah, answered that. Uh, Trident Java. Yeah, so Trident Java might be actually be what I end up using, or I might end up using kind of a little mix of the two. Cool. Cool. That. Gosh, this is hard to understand. Cool that is part rough and smooth at the same time, slightly worn appearance. Ah, yes, the wood. Yes. Um, help to stay away from Barteri too if you don't like the growth pattern. Anubius Nana and Anubius Petite are nice. Also, Anubius Cophophilia, could be any word, is a nice leaf, leaf color. Madagascar Lace Plant, you need one. Um, I do like Madagascar Lace. They're a nice plant. They're really, really appealing. Um, they're a tough plant. I mean, they're not a tough plant to grow. They're a, they're, they're a decent, doable plant. Uh, but they're a tough plant to scape with because they kind of dominate the scape. Um, they kind of draw all the attention to it. I could see it working in... Maybe 150 is big enough that it wouldn't over-dominate everything. But they're, they're a really cool plant for sure. Um, where your plant sits, it appears to get a lot of natural light. Uh, yeah, Robert. So I, I talked about this earlier in the live stream. Um, I'll switch over to, to the little preview that I have. Um, I, I don't know if you were here for this. So I do have a lot of windows around the tank, but uh, A, I exposed this video so that the tank is well lit, which meant that the windows were very, very bright. They're not, sorry, they're not nearly as bright as they appear. Um, they do get a fair amount of light, but I live in a pretty shaded area. There's a lot of over, overgrowth of like big oak trees over my my apartment windows, so I don't get a huge amount of direct sunlight. I also have uh, like blackout curtains. That those yellow curtains black out all the light. So if I start to notice algae problems, I can close those windows up. I typically keep my blinds closed most of the time as well. So I'm not too worried about algae being a huge problem because of excess light. I've had the tank set up for a couple months. I haven't noticed any algae, frankly, at all. It's been a really, really stable setup, which maybe that should tell me that I shouldn't get more powerful lights, that these lights are doing a great job. Uh, but yeah, um, I, I understand that concern. I, it's not something that I've personally experienced a big problem with. Um, what about a big plant like, sorry, we are, so, I'm so far away from the laptop that I can't read this. It starts with a C. Clearly I need like binoculars. Um, I cannot finish that comment because I do not know what the plant is that we're talking about. Um, yes, lace plant. So, all right, so people people do feel that a lace would be a good good idea. To help reduce algae growth at the beginning of a new tank, I like to add water sprite. Such up excess nutrients, grows fast and much easier to remove than other floaters. I think that's a really great suggestion. There are a lot of um, nutrient sinks, um, basically plants that will suck up a lot of the excess nutrients in your water column that can be a great solution. Um, Pothos, that pothos in one of the plants behind, behind me, also does a pretty good job of that, um, sucking up excess nutrients in your in your water column. Um, yeah, I, there are there are a fair number of plants that are are good at solving the, the algae problem, but I, a, a really easily solution that people don't generally want is just do water changes, just like a lot of a lot of water changes. I can never pronounce this species or this variant of Java fern. Windela, yes, 
So that that variant of Java Fern is a really nice nice uh, variant. Um, it's a very detailed looking variant. Um, I've used it in scapes before. To me, for whatever reason, it draws my cranium or apotho. These words. Whenever I have to say scientific names on camera, I have to practice a bunch to try to get them out. Um, it's just not a thing that I'm good at. Maybe if I go back to school for botany, I'll be able to nail it. But right now, this is a weak point. <laughs> I just, I'm not good at it. So I'm not going to try. Um, all right, I'm going to start coloring. Well, one thing that I want to try is maybe I, I want to add some, some Christmas moss to my branches to really have them like pop and feel super vibrant. And Christmas moss is pretty darn bright. It's about as bright as Java fern. So what if we kind of like add a little bit of edging to a lot of our branches here. Kind of make make our branches come alive in a, in a literal sense with Christmas moss. That can be kind of cool. Uh, I also maybe want to add a little bit of Bucephalandra or some, some Nana or Petite uh, Anubius. So maybe we kind of populate a few little bits and pieces here and there. Kind of just add add little little spots of little spots of color, little spots of growth. I'm starting to go full um, full Bob Ross of a happy little happy little tree. It's okay. I'm okay with that. Uh, every once in a while, I get a comment in my YouTube channel saying that I am like the Bob Ross of aquascaping, and I think that's an amazing compliment. If I can make people a little bit calmer and a little bit happier, that sounds like a pretty great gig. All right, so I'm just coloring in each of my branches, trying to accentuate them a little bit make them kind of come alive. I'll add a little bit of shading to them. Kind of, yeah, something like that. So, so they're a little bit more accentuated where they are. There we go. That feels okay. I want to add some crips in the mix down at the bottom a little bit of pops of of movement of a vertical movement rather um, so i don't want my vertical movement just to be on the top i want them a little bit down at the bottom as well these crypts are going to be kind of dark so maybe we put in something like that something like that We'll add a little bit of a light green around them to, oh, nope, that's a mistake. It's a happy little mistake. It's a Bob Ross happy little mistake. Um, something like that. And then I'll add a little bit of, a little bit of red, or a little bit of yellow, excuse me into the mix so there's a little bit of variety of color because there's always a little bit of yellows. Maybe I add a couple little other types of plants in the mix. And then we color in our rocks. Oop, that's too dark. We color in our rocks. Yeah, there we go. Color in our rocks with our little nice light gray. Add a little bit of a dark gray into the mix down here. This is definitely something that we're going to have to outline for it to read at all because I've just made a, a mess of color. 
as I do that, let's see if we've got any questions coming in. Um, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know that I wasn't showing you what I was working on. Here's what I've done. So sorry, everyone. Uh, There's no adding just a little bit of boost of Alandra, at least in my world. I disagree. I think a little bit of boost goes a long way. Um, we're going to add little squiggly lines here to indicate the edges of our Java moss. I'm so sorry that you guys didn't see any of my exciting drama um, or drawing. It was, it was gripping. You guys would have loved it. Uh, So let's see, just adding some more squiggly lines here to indicate that this is the edge of my Christmas moss. Got a little bit of Christmas moss there, a little bit of Christmas moss there, a little bit of Christmas moss there, and a little bit of Christmas moss there. Yeah. So now let's let's finish drawing in our our branches, filling them in, making them feel complete and real. Fill in our rocks at the bottom as well; so they feel real. And then we'll start to circle some of our nubius so that you can see what those leaves look like. A little bit there. Got another branch sticking out there. Another rock. Then we've got our crip. So let's add some lines for our crips in there. Um, we've got our Java fern. So we'll add a few little lines to our Java fern. Make them come alive, come together. We'll move on to the other island. Uh, do we have any questions? Um, a tank I had years ago had accents, did my rocks with um, hematite pebbles, quartz and iron that is inert, mirrored surfaces. That sounds interesting. Um, can I change your mind about a little bit of boost? Probably not, um, but you know, you're welcome to try. Uh, could you build up the wood on the right to break the symmetry? Um, do you mean have it be even larger so that there's a big, big mass and then a smaller mass so that it doesn't feel quite so identical? Uh, possibly. So Robert says, uh, I don't think I'd do the moss, it would take over. And you're not wrong. Um, the moss definitely is a thing that will create more work, possibly, than it's worth. Um, I, I just really love, I love wood that's covered in moss, though. There's something really, really appealing about it. Um, and it's something that I absolutely could eat my words about. But when when moss is healthy and and covering something and is trimmed on a regular basis, that's I think the thing that people fail on is that they they don't trim their moss frequently enough, uh, so it ends up taking over and then it spreads to everything, um, and then the process of trimming it, the moss is going to spread everywhere because you can't catch it all. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of hook hiccups when it comes to to moss, but there's something so appealing about having it growing on the surface of your wood that it's it's hard to say no to. So that's my response to that. Uh, pink flamingos. I agree. Pink flamingos would be great. Let's just imagine that I've added a couple of pink flamingos into the mix. That they're kind of there. They're having a grand old time. Um, there's not enough red in this setup as is. I'm, I'm not a big fan of red, but there's definitely not enough um, 
enough red in this setup. So taking a look up close, I mean, this is kind of messy. This is kind of a hot mess of a drawing, um, but it's okay. And if we compare it to the other drawing I did earlier tonight, oh, I forgot one critical step, and that's coloring in the background with blue. Um, it just doesn't look complete without the blue background. So let's do that. All right, and then we'll add just a hint of yellow to signify our substrate, and we're good. So taking a look at this, how are we feeling about this? Ginger says, moss trimming failure right here. Yeah, it's so easy to get behind on maintenance, <laughs> and then it, it just becomes horrifying. You don't want to ever actually like even look at your tank because you know that your tank represents a huge amount of work to get it back to where you wanted it to be. Um, but every day that you put that off, it gets worse. So it's kind of a, a catch-22. You, you've got to be a little bit more proactive. So I have my A and my A here. Oop, let me update that. There we go. I've got my A at the bottom. So let's call this one C, because we already had B. Um, so how are we feeling about these two drawings? Do we have something that we, we like more or less, A or C, in this setup? Um, man, you guys really committed hard to the idea of having Pink Flamingo uh, in this tank, which, yeah, fair enough. Uh, the, the pinkish crypts really are, they're something special. Uh, and they can definitely grow two feet down in an aquarium, so that's nice as well. Um, I'll give you guys a few more seconds to think about your answer of if you like A or C. Um, and then we will go from there. So first answer, uh, I'm gonna try to pronounce your name, Mizan. That's probably wrong. I apologize for mispronouncing your name. Um, I like A more. That's what, what they say, which, yeah. Um, Monica says, love it. Thumbs up to both. Robert says, C, C. Uh, Dan says, A. Ginger, A. Module World says, A. Robert says, C, B. Um, so we're saying that largely this one's not quite as appealing as this one, which I can see. And then you've got B, uh, if anyone has not previously been here, this is B. And um, B is definitely a more elegant drawing. Um, definitely spent more time drawing this and used better utensils. These feel very clunky by comparison, and very dark. Um, although C could be interesting, I wonder how you'd make it work. Um, what's up, Alex? Looking good. C would be best for your room, says David. Hi, David. Um, I have some footage of uh, David's tanks uh, that I want to show you guys at some point. We'll, we'll get there eventually. Um, <laughs> uh, Amar says A. Go for A. More dense. I love caves and pathways. It's a thing. Um, yeah, caves and pathways, they certainly give you your eye some place to look. Um, and that's that's definitely, it's the leading lines are important. Um, in terms of aquascape, one of the things that you want to think about is you want your eye to be guided someplace, but not to land somewhere, if that makes sense. You don't want everyone's eyes to be guided to the same thing and then just end at that one spot because now all your attention is focused on that one thing and it like good art 
forces your eye to wander all over the painting or all over the drawing or all over the photo. Uh, the same thing for aquascaping. You want your eye to be encouraged to wander. Um, and the way to do that is with leading lines that then kind of guide and lead into each other to some degree. Um, Pup3114, uh, I gotta go take care, keep safe, and keep scaping. Love C2. Thanks for hanging out for the last two and a half hours. It was great. Um, a will work better for our peninsula style aquascape. I tend to agree. I think that A definitely would work better for a peninsula style. Um, especially keeping in mind that this whole thing is probably only going to be about a foot deep from front to back. Um, so it's going to be pretty vertical. The goal is to have at least four inches, let's say, between these rocks and the glass because I want room for like Corydoras to swim. I want to have that nice white sand. Um, Amar says, but come and think about it. B is elegant, suits your place and the living room. Thanks. Um, and Ginger says, I actually like B the best. And B is the one that I drew before we started. So actually, David, um, if you're still there, there's no way to know if you are. Um, but if you're still there, which of these three do you like best? I, I, it's not that I don't value everyone's opinion. I just know David personally. So we've got A, B, and C. Which one resonates with you the most? Um, Mary says, I really like A, but keep going back to C. I can see so much potential and will look good from all sides of the tank. It's true. Um, C would definitely have a lot of potential. Um, it's tough. Uh, and, and C would definitely require fewer plants, which appeals to me as someone that has to acquire those plants. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm sorry that this whole live stream, I've been talking and there's a phone directly in front of my mouth. That's kind of a bummer. Uh, I think that we are, we are approaching the natural conclusion of this live stream. So I just wanna open up for one last round of questions, thoughts, concerns, or ideas. Um, so maybe like another five minutes and then I'll wrap up this live stream. So I wasn't here for B, but now that I've seen it, it's my favorite. So I'll bring B back onto the page. Um, yeah, B is something that I actually drew before um, I started here. And I'll show you a way, way back distant thing. No, I won't. I'm not going to show you this. It's awful. There'll be none of that. You'll just have to imagine that there was something really terrible that you didn't get to see. Um, Gordon says B but shorter sticks. So basically not having them stick up as high. Is that what you're kind of suggesting? Hmm. Um, I could do that. I mean, I can always cut the wood. Um, yeah. David says, I think that A would start to become difficult to maintain that height. This one, uh, I think that's fair. Um, I'm My intention is to plant these with largely non-stemmed plants, slow-growing plants like java fern, um, maybe a couple of very manageable stems, um, some crypts, some anubias, maybe a couple of like carpets, in the mid level uh, of, a, of a setup like this, uh, maybe some Monte Carlo, that kind of thing, um, but not having full carpets, kind of like little patches. Um, maintaining a carpet in a tank this size just sounds tough. Uh, David says, C is personally my favorite for the tank, and I would have many viewing angles. It reminds me of a lot of the display styles at the ADA gallery. Um, yeah, and the ADA gallery, for those of you that don't know, the aquarium design, nope, ADA, went down aquarium design group. Uh, aquarium design group is a wonderful gallery space in uh, the United States and Texas. Um, ADA is in Japan, uh, and they have some really, really beautiful setups. Um, it's Amano's old, old space. So really, really lovely stuff. So. I think that's a that's a fair point that 
this feels very display-y and very maintainable. This feels much more challenging, but potentially more high impact. So it's kind of a matter of, do I want to sign myself up for something that ends up taking so much time that maybe I don't enjoy it? Or do I want to sign up for something that is more manageable, but maybe always leaves me wanting more? And it's kind of a compromise between which one I want to go with. And I've got a couple more ideas, all of which I've got to play with, figure out what I like, what I don't like. Um, so in the next month or so, you'll see a video where I go into detail on all of that. If you liked this process, um, maybe I'll do a couple more of these live streams where I sketch out tanks. This has been a really fun experience for me, uh, and uh, it's pretty sustainable. Uh, it's something that I can keep doing uh, without having to buy a bunch more tanks and a bunch more plants and a bunch more hardscape. I can kind of play around with ideas and we can uh, collaborate and build, build concepts together. So I think with that, uh, I am going to wrap up this live stream. I hope that you all had a lovely evening with me. I hope you all stay safe. I hope you're doing well. And um, I will see you on Thursday for a live stream with Rachel O'Leary. So, and then I'll see you next Monday for another live stream where I'll be solo doing some sort of aquascaping demo. So with that, be well, have a lovely evening, and I will see you next time.